Good morning, everybody. Welcome back once again in the mapping session that we have started for Indian geography. Dear friends, as you know that the mapping is just such a significant part from the prelims viewpoint in general studies and uh, in the geography optional. So we are going to start this session. The world geography uh, mapping part we have already done continent wise and that is available on our channel. You can subscribe and watch all those videos and uh, Indian geography river system drainage system we had started yesterday this lecture is in the continuation of the previous one so let us understand that what is the drainage system mainly in india especially if we are talking about the himalayan river system you know that the uh, indian drainage system is divided mainly into two parts that is called the uh, himalayan drainage system and the uh, Peninsular Indian river system. Himalayan river system, two basic things that we need to understand before we start. That one is called the uh, antecedent river system and the subsequent river system. All right. Antecedent river and the subsequent river means what? Then just try to understand. It is a very simple uh, thing that uh, you will be able to uh, notice that all of us, we know that the, there is Indus River, Brahmaputra River, uh, there is Satluj River, many such rivers are there. And uh, a very basic information suggests that these rivers like Indus River or the Brahmaputra River, these originate from Tibbat. Everybody knows. Now, after originating from Tibbat, from somewhere near Lake Mansarovar or the um, Choma, Yungdung that we will be discussing later on the Brahmaputra or the uh, lake near Lake Mansarovar Indus River is there. After originating from there, they enter into India. They pass through Himalaya. It means what? If we follow the previous lecture, that there I have said that water always flows according to the slope gradient. According to slope gradient means into whichever direction there is a slope, water will be flowing along with that. It means the Tibbat region is supposed to be higher than the Himalayan region. It means the altitude of average greater Himalaya should be lesser than, than that of the Tibbat. But is it so? Answer is no. Tibbat, the average altitude is 4,000 meters, whereas the altitude of greater Himalaya is more than 6,000 meters. Then how you can explain this? It means, it means that if we follow the principle and the theory of the plate tectonics, then we know that the formation of Tibbat Plateau started first. And long after that, there was the formation of Himalaya. Geography optional students can also apply the theory of cover, the concept of median mass. But since it is for the general studies purpose, so I am just concentrating and focusing on that. Tibbat Plateau was formed earlier than the Himalayas. And when it reached, it reached up to that altitude that uh, it could allow the formation of the glaciers and the melting of the glaciers, rivers started originating from there and draining to the Tethys Sea. And the Tethys Sea was laying to the south of the Tibet Plateau. And their process of sedimentation, as well as the sedimentation which was done by the peninsular rivers, started forming the, started forming the base for the Tethys Sea, from where now the new sediment had to be compressed, folded, to allow the upliftment of the Himalaya. Now here we need to understand that those rivers which were originating from Tibet and coming into the Tethys Sea, what happened to them when the Himalayas started rising up? Now these rivers had two choices. Choice number one was there that since a barrier-like structure now was erecting into the course of those rivers, so these rivers were forced to diverge, change their direction. All right. 
change the direction suppose if i have this glass of water and i am throwing this water into the on, on the surface it will keep flowing up to that much distance up to which the force applied into it will allow but in between if a barrier like a structure is erected all of so all of sudden then what will happen it will change its course so so was the destiny of most of the rivers which were originating from tibet when himalaya started erecting up but the few rivers were there which were mighty enough their kinetic energy was so high that instead of changing their course they started eroding that partial or that part of himalaya from wherever these were flowing and they make through their passage and this way this way they were able to maintain their path a very simple reason was there because the rate of erosion caused by those rivers was greater than the rate of upliftment in himalaya and this way these were able to maintain their path antecedent river are those rivers which are able to maintain their path it respective to the regional gradient regional gradient means ki in general in that region what gradient is there that is that is that is immaterial to them they are able to maintain their path by using their own kinetic energy i hope it is very much clear to you people now it means that the indus river that the brahmaputra river that the satluj river these are the examples of those rivers which are able to maintain their path even then even when the himalaya was rising up and that's why these are example of antecedent river rivers which are following their path since the beginning without any change but second type of river is those one those one which are following the regional gradient all right the first one is the antecedent and the second one is the consequent and this is what i have mentioned here i hope that now you are very much uh, uh, comfortable with it indus rivers satluj river rivers which are older than himalayas and cut through it to maintain their path all right and the rivers which originated after the upliftment of himalaya follow the gradient provided by the uh, surface instead of making their own uh, path independently ganga yamuna and the many rivers are like this now let us into the river section and that is the first river from the himalayan region and that is the west flowing river and the name is indus river now this uh, in this we need to understand and we need to take care of those things which are very much frequently asked in the prelims examination and that is what you will find that the indus river and you can see that it is originating from here and this white dot is there that is about the lake mansarovar it means it is not originating from near uh, from lake mansarovar it is originating from near lake mansarovar all right and there after you can see that it is going this way uh, this way it means that it is the north west direction north west direction fine and from here it is now going going and going it is passing through ladakh and you know that here is a mountain range and here is a mountain range it is ladakh and it is janskar it means that it is flowing through this now after reaching over here here you can see that this is a peak fine and that is called the mountain that is called the nanga parbat just north to it from here now it is taking the turn all right southward turn and then it is coming down 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 and down and then forming its delta in the arabian sea all right so what we have to understand what we have to memorize first one that is direction remember if such things come into language it is very much difficult to it is very much difficult to catch these if they will say that after origin it uh, this river start flowing into the northwest direction the northwest direction is this one all right and then it goes this way now since indus river is not a river only it is a river system it means that number of other rivers are supposed to follow it fine like like gilgit river that you can see from here it is coming it is a gilgit river then it is the shyok river all right two major rivers which are joining it from the right hand from within india all right 
from within India. And you know that this is the reason of Aksai Chin and this is the reason of the Pakistan occupied Kashmir, but it is uh, for a matter of time, letter of sooner, we are uh, uh, sure enough that India will get back its territory from the China and the Pakistan respectively. And thereafter, we will be entering into the Pakistan from here. So Shok and Gilgit, and here you know the other river that you should uh, uh, keep into your memory. It is the Kabul River. Kabul River. Fine. It has become important because of the new developments in Afghanistan. And there is a tributary of the Kabul River. Its name is Swat. Swat River. You know, it is a very famous valley in uh, Pakistan. So, so the other river from the left hand side, left hand side, you can find that this river is the Jhelum River. All right. The green color is there for the Jhelum River. As you can see that it is forming a boundary between the uh, Pakistan and India for a good distance. And here you will find, here you will see that in this region, in this region, uh, you will find that uh, it is originating from the Veri Nag. Jhelum River is originating from the Veri Nag. Everything we can't, I cannot write here, but uh, if you ask me, I am writing here. You can note down in your copy, originate from the very Nag. And, and you know that here only there is a famous lake, famous lake, uh, which is located in Kashmir and its name is Wooler Lake. Wooler Lake, that is a very famous lake. And thereafter it is entering into, thereafter it is entering into the uh, Pakistan. And now from here, from here it is coming and later on it will be joined by the Chenab River. This is now the pink color is for the Chenab River. This pink color, this pink color, the Chenab River, this is formed after the confluence of Chandra and Bhaga. Remember the two rivers are merging together to form the Chenab. Fine, Chenab. And this is formed because of the confluence of Chandra and Bhaga. Chandra and Bhaga River. All right, and then it is coming and entering into the Pakistan, and let it is it is joined by the uh, Jhelum River. All right, now uh, there you will see that uh, this river, this white color, is the Ravi River. This Ravi River is going, 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 and going, and finally in this the Chenar and the Jhelum Jhelum uh, pour their water. This is the Ravi River, and this one originates from the Rohtang Pass. From the Rohtang Pass, Ravi and Bias both originate from the nearby Rohtang Pass region. Now this is the Satluj River. Uh, Satluj River is coming from once again from Lake Rakas, then enters into India through the Shipkila Pass, and then it is coming and going. And here it is forming the pa India-Pakistan border between the uh, Firozpur and Fazilka. Fine border it is between the Firozpur. and Fazilka. All right. And then it is, enters into the Pakistan where it is joined by all Chenab, uh, Jhelum, Ravi, all. And then it finally joins Indus River and the place is Mithan Coat. All right. Remember in this theory, remember that the Bias River is the river which doesn't enter into Pakistan. It joins Ganga, sorry, it joins the uh, Satluj near Harike in Punjab only. So this thing you have to keep in your memory that the Bias River does not enter into Pakistan. And finally, the delta is formed here in the uh, Arabian Sea. Now, the other thing that you have to keep in your mind that uh, the few important cities of the Pakistan and that you can say the Lahore is located here. Fine, Islamabad is located here. Lahore, Islamabad and the Hyderabad and the Karachi is here. And here only next, next to the Karachi, there is the Gwadar port, which has been developed by China for Pakistan. Now, we need to learn that the land between the two rivers, land between the two rivers is called Doha. All right, the basic information from the NCERT. Now, these rivers are there, which are known as Punjab or the Panchanad. The land between these all, these all is also known as Doab. But they, this Doab have different names, like the land between the Indus River and the Jhelum River, that is called the Sapta Sindhu Doab. Between the Jhelum and Chenab, it is called the Chari Doab. Between the Chenab and Rabi, it is called Rachna Doab. 
Between the Ravi and Vyas, it is called Bari Doa, and between the Vyas and Satraj, it is called Bist Doa. Very frequently asked question, it was asked in 2015. All right, UPSC prelims. So this is about your uh, uh, index reverse system and uh, that, that you need to memorize. Remember that uh, there are the number of uh, dams and the projects, irrigation projects, uh, navigation projects are there on the Indus River. These are also important. If you can do by yourself, it is all right. And that is a very good thing. If you are writing, it is essential. But my, I will also be doing this thing. But my way is there that after completing the reverse, I will be taking the list of all those uh, irrigation projects, multi-purpose projects, dams, hydropower projects, whichever they're on India and especially those ones which are in news, all right, uh, to boost your uh, prelims preparation. If uh, 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 you are able to do, you can do by yourself, all right. So in this uh, video lecture, this much, Indus River is done. Just try to learn and memorize and uh, uh, please appreciate our initiative by liking, subscribing and sharing with your friends. Thank you very much once again for watching me.